all right what's up everyone uh welcome back to another video today uh, i'm gonna be going over the unit circle and how we can use it to make circular motion um in our roblox game so um first what is the unit circle well it's just a circle that has a radius of one now why is it important that the radius is one well first let's look at our right triangle so of course in our right triangle we have the three basic trigonometric functions we have sine of theta cosine theta and tangent theta and hopefully you know some basic trigonometry but sine is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse and cosine is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse and of course tangent is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side right but let's graph this triangle onto our unit circle now the radius of the circle is going to be our hypotenuse of the triangle so uh, if you look at my Desmos graph here, uh, I'm going to change the angle. And as you can see, uh, as I change the angle of the circle, which by the way, this starts at zero and goes all the way to 360 degrees or two pi radians. Um, as I change the angle, if you draw a line from this point straight down, that creates a right triangle. And if you go here, that creates a right triangle and so on and so forth. At any point in the circle, it will create a right triangle. Um, except for obviously here and here, but uh, if you make this a right triangle, like let's say uh, this is 0 0.25, that should be 45 degrees. Um, so uh, this hypotenuse has a length of one, okay? Um, and since sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, um, and our hypotenuse is one, then sine theta is just equal to the opposite side. So sine is equal to the y value of this coordinate, which is 0 0.7071. Uh, or if you have your unit circle memorized, it's uh, square root of two over two. Um, and same with the cosine. So the cosine of this uh, theta angle right here um, is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. But since the hypotenuse is one, the adjacent side is the cosine so the cosine is equal to the length of the adjacent side so which means that the x value of this coordinate 0 0.7071 um or root 2 over 2 is the cosine of theta so the idea is we take this uh this angle right here and if we extend our circle like this if we make the radius bigger all we have to do to find the length of this the, the y component of the side is to take the sine of this angle and then multiply it by the length of our radius and same for the x component if you want to find the x component all we have to do is make uh, all we have to do is find the cosine of this angle and then multiply it by the length of the radius so how can we apply this in roblox well i've made a quick little demo here um let's just load it in it, it's a loading screen that revolves around a certain point and the start button. Oh, the start button works. Well, um, let's go to our uh, script. And this is the code. Let's, for example, we could change the radius from 45 studs to 100 studs. And it will be the same because we're, because of our unit circle. Um, let's say I want to now let's let's change it to like 20 studs uh but let's instead make it rotate in a different on a different axis rather than the one we have right now it should uh rotate vertically along yeah as you can see we're rotating oh it went backwards so let's let's make this uh i want to delete this revolve code and we're going to remake it. So let's let's insert a local script. Oopsies. Let's insert a local script. Uh, say we need run service. So okay. So now we need a point to revolve around. Uh, I'm just going to use the position of this part right here. Uh, I called it revolve part uh, because that's easier. So we need to set some settings. So let's have a local speed uh let's just have it equal to one we need a radius 
is equal to let's say 20 and um that should be it now we need a angle variable uh is equal to zero let's set it to zero um and we're going to need a loop okay and uh we're gonna have it like we're gonna have here let's make a connection here and we're gonna disconnect it whenever the start button is clicked so okay so our this function is going to disconnect whenever our start button is clicked now what do we do here um well let's get let's actually get the camera real quick as well actually no it's not okay so what do we do here well if you remember our unit circle let's let's just make a vector uh vector three here uh for the position of our camera so um, as you saw earlier, we're only going to be, uh, rotating this circle, uh, on one axis, um, which means we need two inputs and like one zero because you're not going to be moving on the X, Y, and Z axis at the same time. Uh, otherwise you'd have like a crazy movement. So, uh, we're just going to have it, uh, move, let's say on the X and the Z axis. So it spins horizontally. Um, so if you remember, uh, let's just, uh, so if you remember a unit circle, you know that, uh, the X value, uh, of the coordinate is equal to the cosine of the angle. So math dot cosine angle. Um, and then let's have zero for the Y axis and then math dot sine angle. Um, and that's our, that's like literally it. Uh, and then all we have to do is multiply this by the radius. So radius times and then. All right. And that's literally it. Um, and let's make it look at the part just to make this a little easier or a little bit nicer. So um, instead of setting the camera's position, we're going to say uh, workspace dot current camera dot C frame equal to C frame dot look at and then it's going to be at the new position it's going to look at revolve part dot position and it's going to the vec the up vector is just going to be like the global up vector so zero one zero all right and now we have to change our angle so um you could have it in degrees um i like having it in radians so angle plus equals gt times math dot pi so in theory in every second it should move one radian so let's test that out okay so we are rotating and it is at this the right speed um i forgot to have it at a certain height so here let's have like a hey what's going on guys fidget spinner from the future here uh just wanted to let you guys all know that i did this in a really stupid way in the video uh <laughs> so uh, i'm changing it now all you got to do is do new position uh plus equals revolve part dot position and that's it and it should work now Okay, there we go. Great. We can, for example, make this like 250 and then the speed like five and it'll be like super fast. It's kind of a cool effect. It's like the, the world is ending a little bit. And then once we click start and that's it. And we can hide the button as well. So um, yeah quick little video for you guys that's just uh circular motion uh and the unit circle um it's pretty simple pretty easy math it's pretty useful uh so for example any effects that you have that move in a circle you're probably going to use something like this or if you're swinging from a vine uh in a game you're also going to use something like this uh pretty useful stuff basic trig i guess pre-cal pre-calculus but yeah
Uh, next video will be about the finite state machine. We voted on it in the Discord server. Uh, if you're not there, go check it out. Uh, it's not very active, but it could be. So next video, uh, finite state machine. And I'm coming up on a thousand subscribers. So subscribe and also, ooh, and also give me things, uh, some video ideas for a thousand subscribers. I'm thinking I'm going to do like a, I made a video game in 24 hours, something like that. Uh, but you know, undecided. So leave your suggestion in the comments or in the discord server and, uh, I'll see you next time.